What's up, y'all? So, listen, before we get into this, uh, shouts out to GM Dominion. She posted this to Content Creator Discord. It's also available on uh, the stove main site. Uh, this is all of the information, uh, I guess, for the changes, for the hero balancing changes that are going to be coming next week so you guys can make preparations right freaking now. Okay? Um, so, we're going to go over this. I haven't seen any of this yet, so this is all fresh to me. Maybe I should have went over it before, but we're going to go over it together, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how it affects you and how you can be ready for it, okay? So, let's go ahead and dive in. So, uh, hello, Ayers. This is Jim Dom. Um, we would like to inform you of changes expected to take place next week. Please refer to the information below for a more detailed account of this update. So, awakening effect improvements. In next week's updates, the following effects, effectiveness, effect resistance, crit chance, and crit damage after awakening will be increased. Um, so if you guys can see this, instead of 3% and 6%, it'll be 6% and 12% effectiveness. Uh, resistance will be the same crit chance. Instead of 3 and 6, will be 4 and 8. So you guys can expect your damage dealers to have a lot more crit. Um, crit damage will be uh, used to be 3 and 6, and now it'll be 5 and 10. Okay, so th that's big. That's huge. Um, so hero balancing changes. Certain heroes will receive changes in next week's update. Falconer, Cleary, and Cleary will be nerfed and therefore available for recall. We predicted this, right? Once recalled, uh, players will receive any runes they use for skill tree, and Falcon or Clary will revert back to regular Clary. However, once Clary reaches level 50, she may be specialty changed without recompleting the specialty change quest. That's important, guys. So before you get upset, uh, she can be changed without doing the, chest, the quest again if you've already done it. So, um, <clears throat> so Falcon or Clary, uh, what they changed, her cooldown will be increased by one turn. Um, so before it was a four turn, now they moved it up to a five turn. Uh, trust rune effect will also be changed. So had a max 15% uh, granted at the extra turn, uh, or what am I talking about? Has the chance max 15% to be granted an extra turn at the end of a turn. Could, can be activated once per turn. They're nerfing that. That's going away. Uh, now has a chance 10% to increase combat readiness of the caster by 50%. Okay, so... so um, if you if your clury is fast, if your clury is fast, um, you're fine to be honest. Like if you're still running like 240, 250 clury, like she's still gonna pretty much get an extra turn. Um, if it procs, but it's definitely a lower rate. Um, so that's something that you guys have to deal with with these changes with the cooldown increase uh, plus the 50 percent. Is she going to be as effective? Not really. Um, but will she still be effective? Absolutely. Are you going to have to take Clary out of your lineup because of this nerf? Probably not. So you could probably just go on about your business and do what you need to do. But uh, I would recommend you really be cognizant of the changes um, and make adjustments accordingly. Okay. So if you're running a slower Clary, like a 180 to 200, I advise that you probably speed her up or you know continue to work on speeding her up. Um, so you can still take advantage of the 50% combat readiness increase, okay? So, uh, Specimen says, uh, stun effect chance from, um, Dreamy Iron Mace will be, will be increased. Okay, so he's getting a little buff. Um, attacks with an Iron Mace with a 35% chance to stun was before. Now it's going up to 50% chance, which is good. Evil Claws effect will be changed. Uh, so before he attacked all enemies with Evil Claws, uh, increasing his combat readiness by 50%. Now it's going to be attacks on enemies, uh, with Evil Claws with a 30% chance to stun for one turn before increasing. Oh my god, dude. It must say as it's busted. <laughs> it must say as it's busted. Okay, listen, guys. Listen. Yeah. It must say it's strong now. He's strong as hell. Oh, my God. Jesus. Thank the Lord I six-starred him. Okay, so anyway. Uh, also, oh, they're changing his whole kit. Uh, so Light Storm's effect will be changed. Attacks the enemy with Light Storm if the enemy is stunned, penetrates their defense. Uh, now he attacks the enemy with Light Storm, resets cooldown of Life Storm if the enemy is defeated. Uh, if the enemy is stunned, penetrates their defense. Oh my god, dude. <sighs> Alright. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Listen, listen. My ML says user right now, you might just want to take a lap around your apartment or your house right now. Because, yo. Yes. Legit. Uh, Spectre, Ten Ten uh, Spectre Tenebria, 
say that five times fast. Poisonous blast damage will be increased by 20%. Um, attacks with explosion of poison energy, uh, now with a 50% max chance or 70% max chance uh, to inflict poison for two turns. And then they're actually changing her nightmares, illusions effect. So when it, before it was uh, when an enemy was debuffed, the range of the poison blast extended to two enemies. Uh, damage dealt by poison enemies is decreased by max 30%. Um, when this effect is granted more than once, only the strongest effect is applied. Uh, but it changes to now the caster cannot be targeted if allies, if allied heroes remain. <laughs> what the hell? Every time someone is defeated, the caster's attack defense or and defense will increase by 7%, max 10%, can be stacked up to five times. Interesting. Hold on, wait, what? Caster cannot be targeted. Every time somebody is defeated, she gets a attack. Yo, that's going to be really, really interesting. Oh, oh yeah, because when the enemy was debuffed, but now her passive is complete. Oh, that's going to be... <clears throat> that's going to be interesting, so she can't be targeted. That's going to be really annoying. I mean, easily counterable, of course, because you can still AoE, but that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, skill enhancement effect will be changed to the following. Uh, before it's 2, 3, and 5. Now it's 0.5% all stats, 1% all stats, and 1.5% all stats. That's crazy. Um, okay, so uh, Endless Nightmare will have an added stun effect. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. Attacks with a nightmare crystal uh, decrease the combat radiance to all remaining uh, enemies by 50%. If the enemy is defeated, as well as before, damage dealt increases proportionally to debuffs. Um, now it's attacks an enemy with crystal and stuns um, the enemy for one turn, decreases combat readiness of all remaining enemies by 50%. And let's see, damage dealt increases proportional to number of debuffs. <laughs> Spectre TV is better be crazy. Uh, auxiliary. Auxiliary lots. I just can't talk today. Uh, Black Magic's effect will be changed. Attacks with Magic Spear increases attack a caster for one turn. Uh, that was before. Um, and then it, they changed it to attacks with Magic Spear increases combat readiness to caster by 15%. Uh, okay. Uh, Alright. I, I, I think I would have preferred the, the self buff here. But I guess. Okay. Uh, mana injections effect will also be changed. Uh, injection now with mana increases attack and combat readiness basically about 100% was what it was before. Um, and then after now, let's see. Wait, what? Injects an ally with mana and increases attack for two turns and combat readiness by 100% before increasing Cassius attack for two turns. And oh, wow. So he buffs himself. Wow. Okay. Okay, well, that's going to be interesting, so never mind. Uh, I take back what I said about his first skill change, because that with the combat readiness, especially if you're running a fast auxiliary lots, which you are, he's going to be really, really annoying to deal with in Guild War. So, if you guys see Ox lots, kill him. Or you guys could have a problem, because he's basically, uh, how I foresee him being set up, essentially, is super duper fast, so basically, they're going to be trying to lap your team with Ox lots. So, this is another unit that when you look at him, you should expect him to be 200 plus speed. For real. Like, for real, for real. Um, expect to see Oxlots built. Um, Desolation Silence effect duration has been increased. So, before um, he silenced for one turn, now he silences for two turns, which is crazy, crazy. Kitty Clarissa with the changes. Okay, let's go. Uh, attacks all enemy with the Morning Star while raging. Uh, before, 80% chance for unhealable. Uh, but now they changed it to. Uh, let's see if the caster is granted loveliness effect chance increases Wait, what tax on names in the morning star while raging 60% to decrease buff duration by two turns. Oh 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 Okay, uh, this is a big deal. Okay, um so now, with the changes that uh, they had, with, with how she was set up before, um, she decreased buff duration by one and uh, heal, unhealable for two, but now she decreased buff durations by two. Um, so basically, guys, this is pretty much a full strip. Um, she's pretty much countering everybody that has anything less than a three turn buff. Okay, um, so so she's pretty much a full turn, uh, like basically a full stripper, almost, almost a full stripper. Um, this is going to be very interesting to see. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely increase in viability. Uh, also in her I'm So Cute Meow, uh, before she, uh, let's see, decreasing debuff duration on all allies for two turns, granting caster immunity and loveliness for three turns. Um, 
and now they reduce the cooldown so to five turns so now she decreases duration or debuff duration all allies by two turns and grant okay so the same thing they just reduced the cooldown assassin sid also got buffed holy crap swift actions effect has changed when an enemy is defeated targets the enemy with the least health for two turns uh and increases the speed of the caster by 30 percent max to 50 percent which is what it was before um now when an enemy defeated is increases combat readiness by 15 percent max 30 percent and increases attack for one turn and can be activated uh Wait, what? Caster's combat readiness and increases attack can be activated once per skill enhancement. So, let's see, 15, 18, 23, 30%. Um, 30% and increases. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I, I think I liked his passive before, especially with the speed scaling and damage. But let's look at his other skills, though. Um... So, let's see. Execution. So, before he attacked the enemy with powerful ground pound, silencing for one turn, decreasing combat readiness by 30%. Uh, damage dealt increased proportional to cash of speed. Um, and the enemy speed once it awakened. And now they change it to attack the enemy with the powerful pound, uh, silencing them for one turn, and decreasing combat readiness by 50%. Damage dealt increases to casters. Okay, so... I think what they, what they did here was they just try to position them more around the speed. Um, they're not, in a way that's, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I don't know. Because it, it's hard to say that, you know, how they nerfed his passive, but then give him the combat readiness with the 30%. Because if he's fast, you're going to be building him fast anyway, right? Because his base speed is like 128. So chances are you're going to have a 250 to 300 um, you know, end game, you're gonna have Assassin said that fast anyway. So with the combat readiness, essentially, he would basically be giving himself another turn because you're kind of cheating the the combat readiness bar anyway. Um, and then you're maximizing with the skill three to reduce combat readiness. So I guess instead of, I mean, he still has a lot of one shot potential, I think. Um, but instead, now it's gonna shift to turn control. So now he's your Lydica counter. He's your, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever counter. Uh, but but I still think his placement is going to be a little tough uh, in immunity meta, depending on how his damage is going to scale uh, with his speed. I don't know if they adjusted multipliers yet, um, but it's still going to depend. I don't know how I feel about that change yet, but that's just going to have to be a wait and see kind of deal because I'm in the process of building ML Sid, so it's just one of those wait and see kind of deals. So Tywin, uh, all out attacks, decrease uh, defense chance will be increased. So you Tywin fans out there. Um, so now it goes from 75 to max 100% chance. Tywin just got changed to a 100% defense. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, ruinous retributions provoke chance will be increased. Holy crap. Now, uh, up to a max of 100%, uh, for C Cecilia. So, oh man, she's about to be so annoying. Uh, Basar, let's see. Uh, cooldown would be decreased by one turn. Looks like. So he'll be Zorato. Ice Pick's effect has been changed. Uh, before he attacks the enemy repeatedly, dealing increased damage to the enemy was debuff. Now he attacks the enemy repeatedly, increases combat readiness by 50%, and deals increased damage if the enemy is debuffed. That's going to be interesting to see as well. Um, also, they reduce his cooldown on Iceberg by an entire turn, which is going to be cool. Okay, So you guys can expect to see more Zorato in there, especially with that combat readiness if you guys are positioning him around the speed for the stun. Um... Yeah, that's going to be interesting, especially, oh yeah, that's that's going to be real interesting with Ice Pick and then the Iceberg combo. So, I'm curious to see how, how that's going to pan out. Um, potentially could even increase his uh, his capabilities in PvE as well. Um, so, Silk, their win attack concentration uh, affects amount of focus decreased uh, will be reduced. So, before she gained one focus at the end of the turn, consumes two focus when attacked. Um, but now she gains one focus at the end and turn consumes one focus when attacked looks like so for my silk users I don't know what the hell that means. I don't really use silk, but maybe that's good for you guys <laughs> uh, Storm arrow speed decreased speed chance will be, be increased uh, Before it was 85 to 95 now. It's 85 to 100 percent. So that's good for you guys crows it um, Matt uh, marker protections effect will be changed so, before he casts a barrier over an ally for two turns when an attack causes their health to fall below 50%, barrier strength increases proportional to the target's max health, can be activated once every two turns. Uh, now, let's see. 
casts a barrier over an ally for two turns and increases defense for two turns when an attack causes a health. Wow, okay. Barrier strength. Okay, so same thing. Now it just adds a uh, uh, a defense buff to it. So that's going to be pretty solid too, especially, uh, especially well, really for PvP because that combat readiness decrease that Crows it has is actually pretty solid. That's going to be interesting. Um, so those are all the changes for the units. Um, doesn't look like anybody else got changed. So no ML, Car ML Cartuya nerf. Uh, definitely Cleary got changed. I, you know, I'm surprised. I really thought that Cartuya was going to be changed, uh, but he wasn't. So uh, these are changes overall. Uh, looks like uh, ML says got a huge, huge, huge buff. Uh, Oxlots is definitely going to be interesting. Kitty Clarissa too as well. I'm still curious about that uh, that um, that assassin sit change. I don't know. You know, again, just up for testing. But like Cecilia, Basar. Uh, Tywin, Zerato, like these are all heroes, like with these changes you guys definitely want to look at, especially with the 100% AoE death break on Tywin, that's going to be huge. Uh, so also Molagoro improvements, uh, March March 4th, March's 4th week update, excuse me, uh, will decrease the amount of Molagoros required for skill enhancement, improved Molagoro exchange process. Um, three to five star skill enhancement Molagoro requirements will be decreased by 30%. So listen, guys, you needed 68 Molagoras for a 5-star. Now you only need 48, guys. 56 for a 4-star. Now you only need 39. 46 for a 3-star. Only 33. Now that's crazy. Access Molagoras uh, used compared to the decreased requirements will be returned together with gold to the player's in-game mailbox. Let's go. Um, Molagora Go Exchange players will now be able to exchange four Molagoras for one in the shop. Uh, Arena Season 2 will be launched. Okay. Uh, looks like uh, additional when new form uh, glory quest will be added to the launch of season two. Glory quest can be obtained at the end of the week. Uh, let's see here. Arena season two shop opening exclusive items can be purchased. So next week, Hall of Fame first, second, and third ranked. March's fourth week update will refresh the item list and powder knowledge of the shop. Uh, next week looks like Celestine, Rihanna, and oh R and L next week, y'all. Oh my god, okay, make sure you, <laughs> y'all better be selling them cards, we got Aureus next week, we got Elspeth next week, we got Rosa next week, Kaladra next week, Rihanna next week, Elbrus, jeez, this next week is, oh my god, y'all better be summoning your damn, summoning your face off, uh, Layla Violin error, there was an issue with four star artifact, Layla Violin removed the target's buff before attacking, the issue will now be fixed, um, has a 40%, max 80% chance to dispel one, uh, one buff from the enemy after attacking. Uh, that doesn't apply to us because I don't even think we have access to that card. So, um, oh, also package price update. Uh, Google Play Store 328 package prices in certain countries will be changed based on their updated currency exchange rate. So you guys might might get a discount, maybe, kind of. Um, <laughs> okay, so. With this being said, guys, there's a couple of things. Uh, these are a lot of positive changes. The only one I was just kind of like unsure about was Assassin's Sid, you know, but that's just kind of a wait and see. But a lot of these are, are, are real big changes. Uh, like I said, Clary was a nerf to the point where um, she's not usable. She's still absolutely viable in every single team comp. It's just some minor changes that I think will definitely help balance her out, which would be good. Um, a lot of the nerfs that I anticipated seeing did not appear, but a lot of the buffs that, that I anticipated did appear. Um... So, I, I'm really curious. I know, uh, shouts out to Rexy. I know she's going to be super excited about Spectrum Tenebria. Because uh, she's been <laughs> wanting her to, to, to get buff for a long time. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely going to be interesting to see how these changes pan out. I don't anticipate that these will be the end of the changes. Uh, but understand that uh, for those of you guys who are uh, falling victim to the Falconer Cleary nerf, um, understand that she will be available for recall. So if anybody built her, you guys, uh, how the recall process works for those of you guys who weren't here before is you just literally hit recall, it returns your unit back to, you know, three star, like you never touched it before. Um, they, st I think they still keep their, imp no, they don't keep their imprints. They give you all, like if you imprint it, or they give you all of the, the imprint copies too, so you can re-imprint whatever you want. Um, and then that's it. And then you're just kind of chilling. Um, however, anything that you spent, they will return. So if you have a six star Falcon Eclair and you, you guys decide to recall it, which I probably don't recommend in this case, um, then you'll get everything that you invested in that particular unit back. Um, in the cases of the Skillops and the Molagoras and stuff, they will refund you. You'll literally just log in and there'll be a bunch of Molagoras in your box. And then you can redistribute those as you see fit or finish max scaling units. Uh, all in all, I think this is this is a pretty this is a this is a step in the right direction. 
Um, I know a lot of you guys are going to be really excited about the Tywin changes with the AOE, you know, defense break for my Tywin users out there. And uh, some of these changes, I, I think, are going to be pretty game changing. And you can expect to see a lot more of these units involved, especially Oxlots uh, with the change and Kitty Clarissa, uh, because those are pr like pretty big deal changes, guys. So um, <clears throat> let me know what you guys think about these changes. Let me know if you guys are going to be using any of these heroes because of the changes, uh, specifically like Zerato or anything like that. And let me know what you think overall. Um, this didn't hit us as hard as I thought. I mean, I was excited and scared at the same time, but fortunately, we're, we're good. <laughs> All right, so I'm assuming this is the patch for next week, you know, so I don't know what the hell we're going to talk about in a patch prediction video, but that, that about covers it, guys. So anyway, guys, with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone. Make sure you guys are saving your power and knowledge for next week because next week is huge, okay? It's huge. I uh, love you guys. You guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.